Hey guys, if you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's simply the easiest way to make a podcast. Anchor by Spotify has everything you need all in one place. So let me explain. Now, Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your own cell phone or your own computer. Now, I've been using and loving Anchor by Spotify for two years now. And don't forget that Anchor will go ahead and distribute your podcast on so many listening platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcasts and so many, many more. Now, I think it's simply everything you need to make your own podcast all in one place. And don't forget, Anchor is totally free. So why don't you go ahead and download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. I can't wait to hear all of your podcasts. Hey everyone, welcome back to all my listeners. This is episode number six of season eight. Today is Wednesday, February 8th, 2023. My name is Sonal Patel and this is the Paint the Medical Picture podcast series. Now, did we get some news regarding the end of the PHE once again at the end of January? You're right, we sure did. We received more than 60 days notice that our public health emergency, the PHE, will end and officially be lifted on May 11th, 2023. Now, in my opinion, this is welcome news for sure. And all of our 50 states should have already been preparing for this wind down period, right? It's definitely going to be tough for sure on all of our Medicaid enrollees since our state Medicaid programs will be going back to those very difficult pre-COVID enrollment times. All right, you guys, now let's get into today. So today's newsworthy, of course, it's going to be all about the January 2023 OIG work plan. And in my compliance tips and recommendations today in trusty tip, I'm going to be getting us into how we stay in touch with all the new things happening with Pecos. And I'm going to go ahead and round out today's episode in Spark with a remarkable quote on creativity by Bruce Lee. If you've checked me out on LinkedIn, you know I'm all about compliance and protecting our physicians and valued healthcare professionals when it comes to the business of medicine. I hope this week with me brings you enough to take back to your organizations, to want to dive in deeper, to use my tips and best practices to ensure success. I hope this podcast will help you boost the quality of documentation capture and improve coding accuracy as you help all your providers paint the medical picture. If you like what you're hearing, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button now so you don't miss another episode. Please write in a review and kindly drop me a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to my podcast. I'd really love your support. And as always, a friendly disclaimer. Remember, I'm bringing you the news, current healthcare industry news, my compliance tips, and my compliance recommendations based on my over 12 years of experience in front office, in back end, in coding, and in billing for multi-specialty physicians, in compliance, and in auditing for both ENM and surgical operative reports. These are my opinions alone and are not to be construed as legal advice. So let's get into Newsworthy, the month of January's OIG work plan updates. The first OIG work plan update for January 2023 is titled Medicare Advantage Organizations' Efforts to Reduce Racial and Ethnic Health Disparities. This report is coming from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. HHS, in alignment with the 2021 Executive Order Number 13985, titled Advancing Racial Equity and Support for Underserved Communities Through the Federal Government, has pursued addressing health disparities among members of certain racial and ethnic communities. CMS has developed a plan that aims to build the capacity of healthcare stakeholders, including Medicare Advantage Organizations, or MAOs, to take action to reduce health disparities. CMS has provided MAOs with a variety of resources and tools for addressing racial and ethnic health disparities, including annual reports, technical assistance, and trainings. 
This evaluation will identify the actions that MAOs have developed to reduce racial and ethnic disparities in access to care, quality of care, and health outcomes. OIG will also identify any challenges and successes MAOs have experienced in their efforts to reduce these health disparities. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2024. The second OIG work plan update for January 2023 is titled Audit of Medicaid Collections During COVID-19 Federal Medical Assistance Percentage Increase. This report is coming from the Office of Audit Services. The federal government pays its share of a state's Medicaid expenditures based on the Federal Medical Assistance Percentage, the FMAP, which varies depending on a state's relative per capita income. In response to the pandemic, the Families First Coronavirus Response Act provided a temporary 6.2 percentage point increase to each qualifying states and territories FMAP effective January 1, 2020. States must refund the federal share of overpayments and other collections, which decreases the amount of federal funding states receive for a quarter. CMS instructs states to make refunds of the federal share at the FMAP at which the original expenditures were reimbursed. OIG will audit selected states to determine whether those states used the correct FMAP when making refunds of the federal share. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2024. The third OIG work plan update for January 2023 is titled Assessment of the Special Focus Facility Program for Nursing Homes. This report is coming from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. CMS established the Special Focus Facility, the SFF program, to improve care in the poorest performing nursing homes. CMS and state survey agencies conduct increased oversight of nursing homes in the SFF program by surveying these facilities twice per year, which is about twice as often as required for other nursing homes. In October 2022, CMS updated the SFF program to reduce the amount of time a nursing home spends as an SFF and increase the number of nursing homes that go through this program. This particular study will evaluate CMS's and state survey agencies' implementation of the SFF program, including implementation of the October 2022 updates to the program. In addition, this particular study will identify factors that have aided graduated SFFs with sustaining quality improvements and assess the extent to which CMS and states incorporate these factors into the SFF program. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2024. The fourth OIG work plan update for January 2023 is titled Access to Providers Prescribing or Dispensing Medications for Opioid Use Disorder in Medicare and Medicaid. This report is coming from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. Deaths from opioid overdoses have surged to unprecedented levels during the COVID-19 pandemic. As of April 2021, 100,000 people had died due to the drug overdoses in just the preceding 12 months, an increase of 28% from the same period the year before. Access to medications for opioid use disorder, or MOUD, is essential for addressing high rates of opioid addiction and overdose mortality. Medicare and Medicaid play important roles in providing MOUD but concerns of, about access to MOUD through these programs persist. About 16% of Medicare patients diagnosed with opioid use disorder received MOUD through Medicare in 2020, and only 44% of Medicaid patients under age 65 with opioid use disorder received any treatment through Medicaid in 2017. To improve access, the federal government has recently expanded MOUD coverage through Medicare and Medicaid. This particular study will determine what percentage of providers are treating Medicare or Medicaid patients with MOUD. It will also identify geographic areas where access to MOUD remains challenging for people enrolled in Medicare and Medicaid. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2024. The fifth OIG work plan update 
for January 2023 is titled Assessment of CMS's Early Use of Payroll-Based Journal Data to Improve Enforcement of Nursing Home Staffing Standards. This report is coming from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. In October 2022, CMS began to provide state survey agency surveyors with some extracts of payroll-based journal or PBJ staffing data for use in annual nursing home certification surveys, also known as inspections. Now, CMS instructed state surveyors to use this particular data to investigate specific instances of noncompliance with hourly staffing standards. For example, the requirement to have a registered nurse on duty for a minimum of eight hours per day. Additionally, CMS instructed state surveyors to review PBJ data for indications of whether a nursing home has met the requirement to have sufficient staffing. Now, the OIG's objective is to assess the early results of CMS's strategy to use PBJ data to improve the enforcement of federal nursing home staffing standards by state surveyors. Now, the OIG will review CMS's plan for monitoring the success of the strategy and explore state surveyors' experiences with using this data in their surveys. This report is expected in fiscal year 2024. And the sixth and final OIG work plan update for January 2023 is titled OIG Toolkit on Analyzing Telehealth Claims to Assess Program Integrity Risks. This report is coming from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. In the September 2022 data brief titled Medicare Telehealth Services During the First Year of the Pandemic, Program Integrity Risks, in it, the OIG identified 1,714 providers whose billing for telehealth services during the first year of the pandemic posed a high risk to Medicare. Now, as a follow-up to that brief, the OIG plans to release a toolkit that will provide information for our public and our private sector partners about analyzing claims data for telehealth services. Gaining a better understanding of the program integrity risks associated with telehealth can help policymakers and stakeholders develop necessary safeguards and address individual cases of fraud, waste, and abuse. This final report is expected in fiscal year 20. 23. And now it's time for my best practice tips in trusty tip. So in today's compliance tip, I wanted to dive into an update on the PECOS enrollment system for Medicare providers. That's right. PECOS stands for the provider enrollment chain and ownership system. Now, for those of us that perform this type of work, I think it's incredibly exciting to see that something new and improved is finally headed our way, right? Now, here's what Medicare has to say. They're saying that submitting and tracking Medicare enrollment applications in PECOS is about to get easier and faster. Thank goodness, right? So starting this particular summer, PECOS will have features to better meet enrollment needs. Like, did you know there's going to be a new single application for multiple enrollments? It's about time. There's also pre-population of data and an application that's tailored to each unique provider. I can't wait to see that. And then there's also going to be enhanced capability to add or delete group members. There will also be real-time processing checks as well as status updates. Also a bonus, right? And then there's finally going to be a revalidation reminders feature that will pop up. So that's also exciting. The PECOS redesign will include a robust knowledge base with extensive content to help answer questions about enrollment, how to use all the new features, and so much more. So I think this PECOS redesign is so very welcome, right? I knew the process had to be easier, and I'm glad we have something to look forward to. And finally, I focus season eight spark on creativity. I want this eighth season spark to be filled with our world's thought leaders, writers, artists, philosophers, everyone who inspires the need for creativity in all we strive to do. So in this week's inspiring quote in spark is from Bruce Lee. The creative process 
is a process of surrender, not control. Absolutely true, right? I think this is an amazing quote that reminds us to release our control once in a while. I think this quote reminds us that sometimes creativity is that space where you can just wander. Wander and let your mind drift into that more creative side of you. I think this quote inspires us to be bold, to be brave, to be creative. It is with our creativity that we can innovate and do so much more. I'm happy Bruce Lee's spark still shines on in all of us today. So that wraps up today's episode. And as always, I appreciate you all diving into today with me. If you want more information from me, please go ahead and follow me on LinkedIn. I'll leave links to everything in the show notes below. Now, I wish you guys all an amazing, amazing week ahead. It's almost Valentine's Day, right? So I hope you've gone out and bought your bottles of wine, your champagne, your chocolates, your teddy bears, all that fun, good feeling stuff that Valentine's represents, right? Thank you so much for listening in on today's episode. And I hope every week with me brings you closer to helping your providers paint a masterpiece. See you next Wednesday.